Here we are heading through the top of Toronto, drizzling Friday morning. Took a day off work, a bit of downtime. Uh, we're heading up to Bancroft. I'd like to check out a couple of rock and mineral uh, areas. Oh, look at this, it's getting worse. Much worse. So we're basically right at the point where Ontario's sedimentary rock, uh, in particular all of the, uh, the, the limestone, flatly layered limestone and so forth, changes into the, uh, the granites and the metamorphic rock of, of the Canadian Shield right here at, uh, at Burley Falls. But again, on the point of the rock, um, I'm not here so much today to look at the look for caves. It's not really caving weather. Um, I'm out to look for garnets near Chandos Lake, and also possibly some zircon at the uh, Sarnock Zircon Mine, which is up near Torrey Hill. So you can see uh, behind me, basically right there, you can see the rock is all wriggled and folded and basically if you could see up close you'd see it's somewhat crystalline as well. Uh, it's a sure indication that it's rock that's been changed, in other words metamorphic rock. And the shield is full of metamorphic rock. Um, uh, sometimes you'll find things like garnets, which is what we're going to look for, or along the contact zone you may find certain types of mineral species that, that form as a result of what leaches out of the, uh, the metamorphosized rock or maybe the rock that's uh, given it the heat and pressure. So according to my little notebook here, there's my map by the way in the bottom, uh, we're traveling along highway or at least road 620 from leading off from highway 28 at Apsley. Um, you see the X there, where is it? Right there, there's the X, X marks the spot. 13.6 kilometers is where we're meant to go and let's see here, we're at 13.1. We're at, uh, so, yeah, we're getting close. So here we are, starting to rain unpleasantly. Didn't bring a hat, did bring my safety glasses, mind you. So we're at the road cutting. Um, got thrown off just a little bit, even though the directions were quite precise. We're looking for Hessonite garnet. So the question is, where would a person look for something like a Hessonite garnet? I just kind of poking around, imagining what kind of debris may have been left by previous rock hounds who, who, knew, who know where the Hessonite Garnet is. Um, you know, finding stuff like a presumed fool's gold or pyrite or whatever, you can see it kind of there. More of it underneath the ice. Uh, hopefully I can locate something soon because I'm not finding anything right now. So I'm running low on batteries but persistence has paid off. We found the, um, the Hessonite Garnet, it could equally be pyro, pyrite. Uh, uh, pyrope garnet. Um, it's kind of an orangey brown color. It looks like it's maybe mixed in with some diopside and a calcite vein. Um, and obviously I should have maybe looked, looked a little more carefully at the rock cutting because this is quite obviously a place where rock hounds have been chopping away. Not gem quality, so I'm a little disappointed there. Well, what do you expect? But uh, anyway, here, here's a, a look. You know, this is what you're looking at. You can see the brownish sort of um, pyro um, Hessonite garnet, or they call it Hessonite, it could be pyrope as I say. Look at that, little tiny little sort of crystals of maybe diopside, I can't really tell and it's in a calcite so I'm going to take some home and dissolve it and see what kind of crystals pop out and check it out in a microscope. That's one huge crystal up there, um, uh, probably about the size of a softball or a baseball. Uh, in with the calcite and then somebody sadly has chipped away at it and uh, damaged it on the outside. You can, see the, you can see the calcite vein running off up there. But always digging deeper into the into all the cracks and crevices, that's where you're going to find the good crystals. And if you can lever the calcite out with the crystal in it, uh, that's probably uh, a really good idea. And then just dissolve away the calcite, you know, and maybe Coca-Cola or some kind of really mild acidic solution and then the crystals drop out without you damaging them. For me, um, it's not so much the, the, the Hessonite garnet that's really been the good find, it's, it's these green crystals, I'm not sure what they are, maybe, maybe diopside. Uh, they're very glassy, a lovely deep, deep uh, grass green maybe. Um, if I could just find them in, in pieces just a little larger than they are, that it would be quite a find. So I'm going to probably dig around in some of the veins and just see what I can dig up. But I'm running out of batteries, so don't know how long this is going to last here. Just got a picture of uh, one of the crystal faces on, on one of the pieces of garnet here, which was undamaged by a hammer. Um, 
Garnet is of the isometric crystal family. There's like seven crystal families. Uh, isometric, uh, I mean diamonds from that. Uh, spinel is from, from the isometric crystal family. Uh, often it comes either as an octahedron or maybe a, like a cube shape. And in this case, Garnet has a, uh, you know, uh, forms different habits. Like that kind of basic shape is the habit, but the crystal family is a different thing. Um, the habit could come like a, like a rounded ball almost, it's called a rhombic dodecahedron here, but often uh, these kinds of uh, uh, high rope and what have you does often come in those kind of shapes, rhombic dodecahedron. So just from a distance you can see this greenish band, that's what the garnet's in, um, along with this mysterious green crystal which is probably something like diopside. Um, band a bit, but it goes quite high up into the, into the road cutting so I mean this is you know aside from my car that's probably what you're gonna see uh, if you come looking here uh, there's a yellow sign that may be a, a little marker for you as well I'm now thoroughly soaked and very cold but that there looks like possibly one of the better areas to go so I'm gonna quickly just grab my stuff go up there and have a, a last look so just beneath this sort of striated rock up above is this kind of layer right here it's kind of greenish with all of the garnet the, Hes the hessenite garnet as they say within it um, and it stretches along in that direction oh yeah this is the spot someone's dug in there nice and deep the crystals are much larger up here uh, so if you're coming looking for some specimens i would definitely suggest this is the spot but be careful um, you're up you're up quite high roads down there um, but you can see how people have dug in here so I've warmed up um, I'm at my sister and her partner's house here in Bancroft and really there's some things I should have said which I probably didn't say because I was too cold so a general formula for the garnets would be um, R3 M2 R3 M2 SiO4 uh, 3 that's its general chemical formula and of course the different types of garnets the families of garnets are distinguished quite quite uh, distinctly by two groups. There's the pyrospites, which is when the R cation is dominant, and there is the um, uh, eugrandites, which is is where the M cation is dominant. And that in turn, the pyrospites break down to to rhodolite, um, spessartine, and pyrope. And then uh, the eugrandites they break down into the Groschler garnet. Um, the Uvarovites and the Andradites. So, in terms of, of the um, Ugrandites, they are the, the garnets that are most strongly influenced by, by the M cation. And the M cation could be aluminum, it could be iron, it could be chromium. And Groschler is really what's been, uh, it's a garnet that has aluminum in that part of the formula, the, the, the M part of the formula. Whereby, if we're talking about pyrospites, they have uh, the, the, the magnesium, the iron, and the manganese. That are influencing them. So spessartite, spessartite, sp is influenced by the manganese, and the almondine, the lovely pinkish colored garnet, is influenced by almondine, and the pyro um, is influenced by magnesium. But anyway, Groschler garnet. One of the distinguishing characteristics of the Groschler garnet is the fact that it has uh, what's known as an anomalous double refraction. So if you put a, a, a crystal of the uh, cubic system or the isometric system within a polariscope usually a, a crystal that is what is known as doubly refractive in other words it splits the light into two rays that will go dark light dark light as you turn that crystal within the polariscope a lot of times the, well the is isometric crystals don't do that because they don't split light um, so you put a, a Groschler garnet or even for that matter almost many of the garnets that are within the uh, Ugrandite system, if you put them within a polariscope, they have this anomalous double refraction. It's, it's because of tensions within the crystal lattice. So when you turn it, it may still appear like it's a doubly refracting mineral. So that's just a little word from a gemologist. Uh, don't be fooled by the garnet in a polariscope. So the last thing really that I probably want to mention in, in the, the comfort of, of my sister and her partner's home is, is about crystal habit. As I said to you guys, the, the crystal itself is, is in the um, isometric crystal system, but the habit more speaks about the shape of the crystal. And 
garnets in particular, the ones we were looking at, I mentioned the rhombic dodecahedron as its shape. And we're talking in this case about a 12-sided shape. And hopefully, if I can figure it out, you will see the, the shape rolling across the screen, if I can mess with my green screen well enough. Um, so that's a rhombic dodecahedron, but there's also a deltoid icosatetrahedron. Uh, and that's a big mouthful to say, which I definitely couldn't have said yesterday. And that's, uh, I believe it's a 24-sided shape. Um, and the garnet can come in that shape as well. So two distinct shapes for the garnet. I'm definitely seeing the, the rhombic dodecahedron as the shape that I found here. Um, so I think uh, I'm going to share a little bit with you out at the actual location again. I'm going to head out there before I go home today because I want to speak. It's, it's a special clue for you. If you have born with me this long about the technical description of garnet, um, we're going to go out and I'm going to give you a little clue that's going to help you find garnets way more easily, especially in this location. I'm sharing it with you as a treat for listening. Thanks for staying with me. Here's the reward. Um, you will notice the, the greenish layer goes up and eventually contacts up on the surface up there. Now, what's in the greenish layer? The crystals and the calcite. So, calcite dissolves. So what you want to do is you want to go up there, you want to scoop the soil off. It's on the top, it's not very thick find the pockets where the calcite had been dissolved. And within those pockets, what you will find are the crystals. Uh, garnet crystals, diopside crystals, maybe some Vesuvianite. They'll be concentrated in those pockets, or maybe they roll down the hill uh, after the, uh, the calcite had dissolved. Let's go up there and have a quick look. Well, would you look at this? Looks like someone else has had the same idea. Let's say as soon as the ground thaws, you're looking for some nice crystals. This is the spot. And while I'm up here, the same band replicates itself on the other side of the road. You can see over there, there's that sort of fissure. That's a likely spot to have a look and then maybe follow along the fissure. It almost seems like that's where it contacts the surface. Oh, check that out. Chili for lunch. That's what I had for dinner last night too. Thanks to the, the cooking of Melissa and Jody. Um, good rock hounding food I guess and uh, mixed in with some chips chili and chips